Hey guys, we're Gamer34 here. So today, I have made something way better than that last piece of crap that I built. So this is another sequential, well, a serial binary to sequential BCD. Right now you'll see that it's displaying 255. Here's the button that send, tells us to go ahead and send data, data. And here's where we enter the data. So I accidentally built this so that it was flipped the other way so that like, the this was over there and then that was over there so it was just like, Imagine a stack or diagonally stacked like this instead of diagonally stacked like how it currently is like that. Anyway, so it, when it was stacked like this, that meant that the five was over here, the five, the middle, the five was in the middle, and then the two was over here, which would have read 552 instead of 225. So I flipped my build so that it displayed the number properly like this, and so now we're displaying 255. But when I did that, it flipped the MSB on this when I used the world edit command. So Last time the LSB was here, and the MSB was over here, and this time it's reversed. So now this is the LSB, and this is the MSB. So, um, I'd like to demonstrate that this works. So, first, uh, we can send in, like, uh, 84 or something like that, which would be this. It should be 21 shifted up twice. So that should be 84. So we entered 84. Now if we come over here, and we clock it see what's going on and we got 84 and so this is three ticks per bit so that basically means the data loop here is three takes three ticks and the way that works is I will show you this cell right here this is one cell this is one this will give you one digit and so I wanted three digits so I stacked three of these cells and you see how the stack is the wrong way so when I built it I it, it was it's going like this but I had to flip it so that it goes like this. No big deal when you have world edit though. Anyway, I'll show you how this works. Very similar to the last one that I built. So right here is our imp is the least, least significant bit. So if you put in a one here, that one comes out and is told to be a one. But when that one comes on, it gets shifted into here through this torch so let's count the ticks here so we int we input a one down here it goes through a either a torch or a repeater so that's one tick it comes up here and gets encoded here through another tick so that's two ticks one tick in like right here one tick out right here two ticks comes through this line this is the third tick and then comes through to here which is shifted up one so you see now that we're we alternate this every other line, which causes this to alternate every four lines. See how that updates twice, while well, this updates only once, and it just loops into itself, and they keep looping around like that. So the only way to stop this looping is to remove this input, but it's still going to loop for a little bit, I think. Oh no, it doesn't. But if I if I had a higher bit input on like this, it would loop forever if I left it on. Or maybe not. There's some imp there's some combination of inputs where it'll loop forever. Uh, maybe it's this game. Or yeah, you see how it's looping forever now. So we need to prevent that from ever happening. So the way that we prevent a loop from happening is you basically flood all of these lines, these decoder lines, and if you flood them always true like this, that stops the looping. So I used the same technique in my old one to stop the looping where you flood the decoder. So first I'd like to show you that, uh, so this is three of my old ones stacked together so that I could try to get three screens. The goal here was to have three sets of seven seg displays and first off, they're diagonally shifted over so that's not pleasant and then there's gapping between, but the gapping's manageable but then look how large this is, like there's a lot of empty space. So this old design for sequential was four ticks per bit. We had the decoder encoder, which was two. We had the signal extender, which is three. And then we had the latch, which is four. My newest one buses straight through the middle here, like that, and doesn't need a latch because I latched the output instead. So I'll demonstrate a few more times what this thing can do. So we just entered 84. If we shift 84 up, we should get uh, well, 80 times 2 is 160, and 4 times 2 is 8, so we should get 168 when I do this. 
and somebody decided to join me. Let's see who's that. It's red, I think. Okay, so let me clock this in. So it does 168, like I said. All right, so how does it prevent itself from looping? Like I, uh, th those conditions where it would loop? Well, what I did is right here, this is what tells it to how long to hold this gate open. I put a bunch of delay on that wire so that it, it would make sure that like it was done doing the calculations it needed to before it reset itself. It comes in here and then it floods each one of these lines. So this is right here, it's like that. And here is the same way like that. So this is probably what I'm going to be using on my CPU because right now, uh, well, I was getting really frustrated with that huge piece of junk. And so I've just resorted to using, uh, to trying to use Nuo's design, which is quite old. Uh, so this is Nuo's design. It's flat and it uses pistons and I didn't want to use pistons, but I think I can manage a really similar profile here with my system, right? like that. I just stack one light slice there, one slice there, one slice there, and then bust all my lines down and I could probably get it in line like this, especially considering how much room there is like that. So I could, I definitely think I could get diagonal stacking in here to fit. Um, and then, so that's what we're going to be using on the CPU here. It's going to be diagonal stacked. And then uh, we'll have some displays here and then we only need one wire to bust we we only need to bust one wire to do control all three of these screens and get data in because they're going to be controlled serially and you'll only be able to write one screen at a time. So the way this will work is I'm going to add three bits to my instruction set that are probably going to hang off over here. And what the three three bits are going to do is it's going to say if you're reading a register, it's going to take the out values from that register and it's going to write them to the display you pick. Uh, so what you'll have in these extra three arguments here is uh, two bits to select which screen you want, and then uh, a, and then like one other bit for like a expansion in the future. I think for some other controls that I might need to add, maybe resetting it or something. Um, and then so you can reset and then the address that you want, or plot uh, send values there, or the address that you want to to the screen that address that you want. And so this way, like you'll be able to do like an add instruction and still send that register to the screen. So you can show people as your instructions running well, what, what register has what value in it um, and you'll be able to update it per instruction. So I think that'll be useful for debugging and stuff too. And then we'll get the screen hooked up, which we'll do, uh, which we'll use these four bits, four on each side, we'll put some registers on. And then uh, I'll show you guys how to make it work so that you can use the user input like this because I haven't shown you guys this yet. So. Uh, we built the user input, but it wouldn't actually run an instruction properly. Um, so if I just do enable branch and update the clock a few times, we're going to go to line zero. So now that I, if I enable the clock here, I made this run at 13 ticks, but your guy, your guys this isn't set up to do that yet. So the next video coming out will be a tutorial on how to set this up so that it runs on 13 ticks. So if I clock this here, it's programmed to run Fibonacci. So there'll be some artifacts, but this is it running Fibonacci. I think I've showed you guys this before, but uh, hopefully it interests you guys now to see that it will be coming together very shortly. Um, so here we go. We'll see two, and then we'll see three, and then five. Then it's going to do a calculation for branch. It's doing zero minus zero and getting zero. Then saying branch if it's equal to zero, and it was. And then it branched and did eight, 13, 21. Now it's doing that same thing, comparing zero to zero. Zero. Uh, then branching if zero, and then it adds, and then, yeah, that's the algorithm. So what you'll be able to do is per instruction, oops, per instruction you'll be able to send a, each register to the list. So you can say, you can have it go one, two, three, then it'll update five, eight, thirteen, then it'll update twenty-one, thirty-four, fifty-five. And so I think that'd be very useful and very cool to see being streamed to the screen. Um, and uh, yeah, that's about it. So thanks for watching and uh, hope you guys enjoyed.